In this series of videos, I want to show you how to create your own invoicing system. I'll start off by describing how to create the invoice itself in terms of formatting and structure. Also how to keep a customer database and how to keep a record of invoices. And you'll see here that wherever we have an invoice that's overdue, it appears in red. But if we say it's paid, then the red background disappears. So it's a good way of tracking your invoices. You can also see over here when the invoice was emailed and you've got a link to the invoices as well, so you can view them. Now in other videos, I will also go through these macros that I've created. You've got a macro that will save the invoice as an Excel file, a macro that will save it as a PDF file, a macro that will automatically email the invoice to the customer. A macro that will add the invoice to the record of invoices. And the last macro here will clear the current invoice so that you can start a brand new invoice. And it will also automatically generate the next invoice number for you. If you want to learn how to create this invoice from beginning to end, including all the macros run by these buttons, then follow the link in the description of this video to the playlist that contains all the videos in this series. Okay, in this video, we're going to create the invoice itself. And your first step is to sort out the margins and page size. So in Excel, if you go up to the page layout tab, and you can start off with your margins. If we go down to custom margins, you can see the default settings. Now these values are currently in centimeters. But if they appear in inches or you want to change them, you can go to File, Options, Advanced. And if you go down to Display, you can change your ruler unit. So I'm going to be working in centimeters in this video. Anyway, back to custom margins. Now, obviously, you can decide for yourself what your margins are going to be for your invoice. But for this invoice, I'm going to say 1.5 on the left side, one on the right side, two top and bottom. Click on OK. And for my paper size, I'm choosing A4. If you're in the US, you might want to choose letter, but I'm going for A4 in this video. Now in A1, I'm just going to write a placeholder for your company name, whatever that is. I'm going to Apply some changes to the font here. I'm going for Amasis MT Pro Black. Again, you can go for whatever font you want to use. And I'm going for size 20. Change the font color. And I'm going to merge these cells. So that's from A through to F. I'm going to merge across. Now in H1, I'm going to type invoice. And I'm going to apply the same font settings. In fact, the invoice is going to be slightly bigger, font size 26, but I'll apply the same color. And I'm going to merge it across columns H and I. Merge and center, merge across. Now we'll widen column I so we can see the word invoice in full. Now underneath this row, I'm going to put a little border. So I'm going to right click on those cells, go to Format Cells, Border. So I'll choose this style border, and I'm going to choose that same color as the font, or thereabouts anyway, and then choose this bottom border. Click on OK, and we should have a bottom border across those cells. I haven't included column J because that eventually won't feature in the invoice. Now column A, I'm going to reduce the width of down to three centimeters. And then in B3, I'm going to type invoice number. B4, PO number. Then date. Then terms. And days. And then I'm going to apply a related font, Amasis MT Pro, and I'm going to widen this column 
Now these cells here are going to merge across. They're going to contain the actual invoice numbers, date and terms and days. So having selected all those cells, I go up to the Merge and Center drop down and I say Merge Across. Now let's select this little table and I'm going to apply some borders. So right click Format Cells or you can use the shortcut key Control 1. So for my outside border, I'm going to use this style of border. For the inside border, I'm going to use this style. And I'm going to click on OK. Then I'll apply some shading to this column with the labels in. And I'll change the font color to white. Now G, H and I is going to be where you are going to place your logo. So again, I'll put a border around this area. and I'll fill it with a gray background. I'm thinking actually the borders are slightly too thick in both of these areas. So I'll select them both, control one, and I'll choose this border. There we are, looks a bit better. Now in B8, I'm gonna write invoice two. This is where the address of the customer is going to reside. Now it's automatically applied that background color which I'll take off and underneath the cells here I'm going to have a thick black line so thick bottom border that's from the borders button and then what I'm going to do is down to row 16 I'm going to draw a border around this area for the address block so control one I'm going to go for this style and that's going to be on the right side, the left side, and the bottom. I click on OK. That creates the address area. Now these grid lines are making the invoice look a little bit ugly. So what we'll do is we'll go to Page Layout and we'll hide the grid lines. Now in row 18 is where we're going to start to itemize the elements of the invoice. So we'll have Description as our first heading. And that's going to be merged across to Column E. Column F is where we're going to have quantity, then price, and column G, VAT, and column H, and total, excluding VAT, column I. Now we're going to change some column widths now. Column E, 9.56. Column F, 4. Column G, 9.56. Column H, 8.33. Column I, 14.33. OK, let's format these headings. Font, Amasis MT Pro. Blue background, white font. Now we need to create a table for all the items on the invoice. So I'll select from the headings down to row 35. Control 1 to go to Format Cells, and I want a solid border around this table. And the inside borders, I'll use this style. And we'll click on OK. Now I also need to merge across these cells. Now, underneath here, starting in row 37, I'm going to leave a little space for a customer message. Make sure that's the correct font. And I'll select over to column E. And I'm going to go for a thick bottom border. And then if I select across those columns and down to row 41, control one on my keyboard, I'm going to choose this as a border for the customer message. And I want that on the left side, the right side, and the bottom. Over here, I'm going to have space for the subtotals, VAT and total. First of all, I select this row, and I want to fill that with a patterned gray background. So control one, I go to fill, and I'll go for this background color, and I'll choose a pattern. Then we'll have a line for subtotal, VAT, 
and then the total. And I'm going to format all of these cells with that Amasis MT Pro font. Total row, I'm going to apply some borders to. I'll go for this top and double bottom border. And I think I'll make that bold. Now at the bottom here, we're going to have an area for company details, company number, VAT number, etc., And then an area for payment details, account number, bank, etc. So in B43, I'll write company details. And in G43, I'm going to type payment details. And I'll do some formatting here. So we'll have Amasis MT Pro font. I'll make the headings bold, change the background color to blue and the font to white. And under company details, I'm going to have company number, then VAT number, telephone number, email. Under payment details, account number, bank, and sort code. If you have international customers, you might have something like an IBAN number as well. Now let's put some borders on this area of the invoice. Control one, I'll go to borders here. I'll choose a solid border for the outside and I'll choose this dash style for the inside. Now I need to do some merging. So I'll merge these cells across and these cells. Then these cells here need to be merged across, and so do these. Okay, so that's the basic structure of the invoice. Let's add some functionality. I'd like a drop down menu of terms 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So to do that, I'll select that cell, I'll go to data, over to data tools, and I'm going to this data validation button. And I'm allowing a list and I'm going to have 30 comma 60 comma 90. Click on OK. And now I've got those options in the drop down. The date, well, you could use the today function for that. That would always return the current date. Over here, I'll type something like your logo here. Now in this cell here, I want a drop down list of existing customers. So I need to create another sheet. Let's first of all call this sheet invoice template. And then the next sheet we call customers. And I'm going to create a little table to store the customer details. So we'll say customer name, address one, I'll create several address fields. We'll go across to address five, and then we'll have an email field. And I'm gonna store this information in a table. The reason I want to do that is because tables create dynamic ranges. So if I add new customers, my drop is gonna automatically pick them up. So to convert this to a table, you click into one of your headings, you go to insert table. You need to say that you already have headings and then you just click on OK and give the table a name. So you've got a new tab on your ribbon, table design, table name on the left here. We'll call this customer underscore list. Can't have a space in a name. Right, I'll create two customers. Let's widen the columns a little bit. OK, so I want the drop down it's going to appear in B10 to pick up all the customer names that appear in column A. Let's go to B10 and we want to drop down here. So we go to data, go to the data validation button. We're allowing a list. But this time our source is going to be not typed in, but got from this customer list A2 through to A3. So if I click on OK, it does give me that drop down. Now, if I add in another customer, what I want to happen is that the drop down list would pick up that new customer name and it hasn't. 
And this is despite the fact that this is housed in an Excel table, which does create a dynamic range. The problem is, is that this table is on a different sheet. If it was on the same sheet as my invoice table, I wouldn't have this problem. Right, I'll just delete this. Now to get around this, what you need to do is create a named reference to this part of the table, the customer name column. Now to do that, first of all, what you do is you click into an empty cell and you say equals, and then select those two cells. And you can see this is the syntax that Excel uses to refer to that column. Now I'm gonna take that and copy it and then get rid of those. And what I want to do is create a named reference to that column reference. To do that, I go to Formulas, Name Manager, New, and I'm gonna call this Customer Dropdown. It refers to, I paste in what I had on my clipboard, which is the way Excel references the customer name list in my table. Right, so click on OK and then close. Now, I'm going to go back to my drop down. I'm going to go to the data tab, back to data validation. And in this source box, instead of referring to that column directly, I'm going to press F3 on my keyboard and paste in that name that I've created. So this still works, but if I add a new customer, will it pick it up? Yes, it does. So we've got our customer list sorted out, ready to go for new customers. What we want to happen is that when we choose a customer here, that it's going to display the relevant address fields in these cells. Now to do that, I'm gonna use a VLOOKUP. I'm gonna look up this value in the table array, customer list. And I want to initially return the value from column two in that list, and I'm doing an exact match. I put in zero or false. If I press enter, it returns the first line of the address for this customer. Now, before I can use this formula for the other parts of the address, I do need to fix my reference to B10, and then I'm gonna copy it down. But you can see that all it's doing is just returning the first line of the address. Now, I need to refer to these other columns so address two has a call index number of three, address three has a call index number of four, et cetera. So I just need to change these call index numbers and it will pick up the rest of the address. And the email address. I might just format that email address. I don't want it to act as a link, but I'll change its font color to blue and I'll underline it. Now, if you find it takes the border off the bottom of that box there, just select those cells, Control-1, Borders tab, choose the style of border, which is what we applied before, and we'll apply it to the bottom border. So now, if I change my customer from this drop-down, I'll get all the address details and email address for that customer. Now, let's put a dummy item in the invoice. I'll just call it some stuff. So we definitely want the font to be the same as the rest of the invoice. So I'll change that to Amasis MT Pro. And I think actually we'll do it for the whole table. So if I put in a quantity of six, say our price is 599, and that would need to be formatted with currency format. And I'm gonna make sure that all of these cells have the currency format applied. Now that, I'm gonna assume 20%, and it's always gonna be 20%, so I'm gonna hard code that into this formula. I'm gonna say price times 20%. And then I need to copy that down the rest of those rows. We'll get rid of those zeros in a moment. Total excluding that would be quantity times price and I'll also copy that down. What we'll do to get rid of the zeros is we'll say that we only want to perform this calculation if there's a value in the quantity field. So I'll write a little if, I'll say if F19 is not empty, is not equal to an empty text string, 
then perform the calculation, otherwise return an empty text string. Over here we can do the same thing. I can say if f19 is not equal to an empty text string, then perform the calculation, otherwise return an empty text string. Now, annoyingly, the copying down has also copied down the formatting. So I'll select this whole area. You can see it's got rid of the borders there. So I'll just reinstate those. Now let's deal with the subtotal next. That's going to be a sum of all the values in column I. So equals sum these values here. The VAT would be a sum of all the values in the VAT column. And the total is going to be the subtotal plus the total VAT. So that's got that part of the invoice working for us. Down here in the company details, I mean, I'm not going to write the company details in or my VAT number in or anything like that. That'll be up to you. But I guess the only thing we ought to do is change the font for these fields. Now it's always worth seeing how your invoice is going to print out. If you go to file, print, you can see it nicely fits on one page. It's not going over more than one page, which is good. So I'm pretty happy with the overall design of my invoice. Now I'm going to put an invoice number in and a PO number. Let's put in some more stuff. And we'll have nine of those at $8.99. And you can see it's successfully performing those calculations, which has given me a new total. If I want to put a logo in here, I could insert a picture. I don't need to keep that background color. And I'll don't need to keep that border either. So now I'm ready to send my invoice and you're normally going to send it as something like a PDF. So how do I create a PDF out of this? When I go to file, export, create PDF, and I'll just save it to my desktop. And I'll say invoice for stuff. And if I click on publish on my desktop, there's my invoice ready to go. All I need to do is attach that to an email and I've completed my invoicing. Now the creating of the PDF and the emailing can be automated via macros, which is what I look at amongst other things in the other videos in this series. If you want to learn those other things, then just follow the link to those videos in the description of this video. But that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Thanks very much for listening. If you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.